first one. Yes! No! <laughs> 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 What's going on guys? This is Austin with Lunker Life. Today I'm doing another review. I really enjoyed doing that last one on the cash and crankbait series rods. And today I've got another cash and rod I want to do. I to Bass Pro while I was on vacation back in the summer and picked up another cash and rod. This isn't your ordinary cash and rod though. This one had a couple different appealing attributes that pretty much made me want to give it a shot. Number one thing, is the price. I'll go ahead and throw that straight out there. This is called the Cashin, that might be a little upset on the Cashin Kayak Series Rod. This one's rated for worm jig, so I can't necessarily do a side-by-side -side comparison where they're both rated for different techniques of fishing. However, let me show you guys this. So this rod, I think this is the ballpark of what I paid for it. You can see right here, it goes for, yeah, come on focus, there you go, about $120 to $130. Where an ordinary cash and rod on Tackle Warehouse goes for, focus, 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 180 So I was like, wow, that's a major price difference. One thing a lot of people tell me when getting into fishing, and I mean, I've learned my lesson, and I completely agree. You get what you pay for. I mean, there ain't no end for butts around it. You can pay cheaper for a rod, and it'll work. Absolutely. It may not be as durable. It may not be as sensitive, but yes, it can still work. I grew up using Zepco 33s, caught plenty of bass on them. Nothing wrong with starting out with that. But to get to the point here, um, sensitivity-wise, I do like it. I got a clip I'll show you guys here in a little bit. I've only used it once so far. And the other day, I lost a pretty good fish on it, but I was able to land one. Don't have a video of the short one. It was maybe 13 inches, and by the time I set the hook, well, basically the hook set, boat flipped it in the boat for me. It was so close. But this rod, uh, where my crankbait rod is seven foot, I've actually got it here next to me. I'll pull it back out in a second to show you guys. This one is six foot nine. It's a fast action, medium heavy. Now, at six foot nine, you lose the three inches. If I do a side by side comparison here, here's a good time to do it. It looks like you lose it in the butt. See, I've got these reels basically side by side. I got a crankbait on this other rod. I'm trying not to get it in my hand. Okay, so as you can see, the butt on this rod right down here, the kayak series rod, is significantly shorter. About two to three inches. You might lose an inch at the eye somewhere up there. Assuming it's for primarily, I mean, it being a kayak series, I guess it's pretty straightforward. It's meant to be in the kayak. You're going to be sitting at a different angle. The butt of the rod could be in your way. Could be hitting your wrist if it's a little bit longer. So I could see where that might be the reason for it. I haven't done a whole lot of research. But me personally, standing up on a boat, don't make a difference to me. Um, I'll show you guys this clip real quick. So this was just from the other day. Me and Brent went to the lake for a little bit. I hadn't got to go in a while. You can see right there where it landed. That was pinpoint where I was trying to put it, right on the bank. Doesn't take long. Watch the rod tip. Boom. Fish on. And I keep reeling right there. I freak out. I see it jump out of the water much bigger than I anticipated. Let me say, this rod feels amazing right now handling this fish. I'm pulling it in. I can feel every time it shakes its head. feels great. It's getting closer to the boat. He's ready with the net. It's jumping several times. And pop, it comes off the hook. Unfortunately, my arm was in the way for most of that. But that was very unfortunate. And it made me sad. But still, it was a uh, really fun time. So yeah, really stinks to lose that fish. That was probably one of the more solid fish I've hooked into all year. But I mean, hey, you can't get them all. I like this rod though. I got it pairs up with a loose speed spool. A, uh, let's see, I don't know what this is. A MSB Mach 1. It's got the 7 to 1, might be 7 to 3 gear ratio. Let's see, 7 to 5, my bad, 7 to 5. Got it with 15 pound fluoro trilene. Primarily, I've used this rod just almost for specifically texas rig i'm going to throw some jigs on it later uh it could probably handle a buzz bait spinner bait i mean it's got plenty of backbone i have no issue really just leaning into a fish putting a hook into it like i did that big one but hey the little ones come right in those big ones will spit it on you i'm just got that curse i guess i'm not overall i like the rod the price was amazingly appealing compared to a regular casting rod around 60 bucks cheaper it did not come with the rod sleeve that my other cash and rod come with, which was kind of a bummer. But I'll be honest with you guys, the rod sleeve that... Man, I'm going to break the eye off this rod here. <laughs> the uh, rod sleeve that come with this one, 
I hardly ever use anymore. I have a rod rack in my room, keeps the rods stood up vertically. I just grab them when I need them and go. When I get a boat here, hopefully soon in the upcoming months, I will probably use those sleeves more. But while I'm just a kayak fisherman, I don't really need them right now. But essentially, yeah, overall, I'll give this rod a 7 out of 10 for as much as I used it so far. I haven't really used it enough to, you know, give it a full-on review. This is more of a first impressions review, but sensitivity-wise, I can tell the slight difference. This one is a little heavier than the other caching rod. I'll throw that out there. Just if I hold them both in each hand, I can see that the, this one's a little bit heavier. Uh, one thing I will like to add before I get too far ahead here. It's got micro guides, but this has a unique guide right here. As you can see, it's like a regular size guide that you would see on, let's say, a Zebco 33 rod. But it's got a little micro guide and I went right there. That's got three little, I guess you could say, braces attaching it to the big guide. And once you get down the rod, you go back down to regular micro guides. That's just something interesting I've seen. I don't really know the point of this. First time I used it, I run the line through it and it's the micro guide completely. Just me not paying attention more or less. But uh, yeah, I do like it. Sensitivity wise, I can pretty much drag this thing through any type of brush, any type of rock. I know what I'm going over and I can tell when that fish has picked it up, when it's biting it, and pretty much when I need to lean into it and put a hook in its mouth. But I can't wait to use this thing some more. We're Fall being right around the corner, I'm going to be throwing probably some more jigs and of course, well, a Texas rig trick pumpkin green pumpkin, blah, blah. a Texas rig green pumpkin zoom worm can never do your own though, so I'll probably end up throwing it. It's kind of my go-to when worm fishing, so we'll see how it goes, but overall guys, like I said, I'll give this rod a 7 out of 10. It might go up in the time, it might go down. I haven't had it long enough to test its durability, but I definitely do see myself buying both more of these and the regular series caching rods that are a little bit better, but I would like to increase my inventory right now with these. I've got some other Abu Garcias that I do like. I told you about them in the last video. A little bit cheaper price-wise, but I can tell the difference in sensitivity and quality. But that's pretty much it for today, guys. Hope y'all enjoyed the review. I'm definitely gonna try to get some more fill-in with this rod, let y'all know what more I think about it down the road. I'm still forming my opinion on the crankbait rod. I really do like it, but this just has not been a good year for me to catch fish on crankbaits or jerkbaits. Maybe this winter will be different. I won't know till I really get out there. But let's just see how that goes, and I'll be sure to let you guys know. Hope you all have a good one. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.